When it comes to L'Hopital's rule, there are several different indeterminate forms, another one of which is infinity minus infinity. Right, something of the form infinity minus infinity, that is not zero, it is essentially meaningless until we rework it to get it to a different form, and then we can actually figure out what such a limit evaluates to. The key when you have a form infinity minus infinity is not so straightforward. You can certainly try finding the common denominator, which is the first thing, and those will pretty much jump out at you. Um, if that's not obviously what to do, you can try factor something out to get something of the form zero times infinity, which then once you get that form, you force one down to the denominator by the reciprocal, um, and then you and then you go from there, or um, multiply by the conjugate. Um, if that's an option, usually that's when it's of the form radical something plus or minus radical something else. Um, but it really just comes down to what works for each individual problem. And of course, remember that our goal is to get it of the form zero over zero or infinity over infinity so that we can apply L'Hopital's rule. L'Hopital's rule only works if it's of these two forms. Let's try a couple of examples. Okay, in part A, we have the limit as x goes to zero of the quantity one over x squared minus cos three x over x squared. As always, the first thing to do here is just see if we can evaluate this. So what happens when we essentially plug in zero for x or let x go to zero? We get infinity minus infinity, which is an indeterminate form. Infinity minus infinity, indeterminate. So we need to do a little bit more work here. So when we go to our key, it kind of jumps out that we can maybe at least try finding the common denominator. And sometimes you may start on one route and it doesn't work and then you back up and try something else. But in this, I'm thinking because these have the same denominator, it's really gonna work well to try a common denominator. So let's try that. That gives us the limit as x goes to zero. And what do we have? If we put that all over x squared, we have one minus cos three x and now letting x run to zero gives us one minus one, which is zero on top. Plugging in zero for x on the bottom gives zero down there. Zero over zero is indeterminate, but it's a good kind of indeterminate because now we can use L'Hopital's rule. Let's review L'Hopital's rule just to make sure we know where we're headed here. There it is in all its glory, but the important thing is that we need this fraction, this ratio of functions to be zero over zero or infinity over infinity. If that happens, then that same limit can be found by taking the derivative of the top and the derivative of the bottom. Note that that's not the quotient rule there, it's just the flat derivatives, much easier than the quotient rule. Well, we already determined we're in this form of zero over zero, so let's take the derivatives and see what happens. Okay, so this is equal by L'Hopital's rule. Now we have the limit. We're still doing the same old limit. Limit as x goes to zero. We hit it with the derivative here. The derivative of cosine is negative sine. So negative cosine goes to positive sine three x times the derivative of the inside. That's the chain rule. So we have another three hanging out here over two x. The derivative of the denominator is two x there. Run it through the limit again. What do we get? Zero over zero again. Okay, that's no problem. We can apply L'Hopital's rule again. It only becomes a problem where when you apply, you keep applying L'Hopital's rule, and this thing inside is getting worse and worse and worse. But for us, it's getting a little better. Let's apply the rule again and see what happens. So I'm just going to erase here. So this is equal to, by L'Hopital's rules, we put a little h up there, or an LH or an L. Uh, okay, derivative of the top now is 3 cos 3x three times 3, so that's 9 cos 3x all over 2. And, oh, I forgot my limit here. Don't forget the limit because we technically haven't evaluated that. And now we evaluate the limit simply to get 9 halves because cos 0 is 1. So applying L'Hopital's rule twice in this case led to the answer. And sometimes you may even have to go 3 or 4 times. As long as it keeps getting better and closer to the answer, you're on the right track. Okay, for part B, we have the limit as x goes to infinity of the quantity x minus square root of the quantity x squared minus 3x. So here, if we just let x run out to infinity, we again get infinity minus infinity, which is an indeterminate form and not of the kind we can plug into L'Hopital's rule. So we need to do some more work. 
Well, looking back at our key, we can't find the common denominator because there's no denominators. Um, the conjugate trick doesn't actually work in this case. You can try it. it. It's one of those situations where it just gets worse when you start doing derivatives. I recommend the conjugate trick if you're dealing with a square root minus a square root. So if you had something like square root of x minus square root of other something else, right, then hit it with the conjugate um, on the top and the bottom. But this is not that. Since we just have an x here and not a square root of x, I'm going to try this middle approach here to factor out to get the form 0 times infinity. What am I going to factor out? Well, it's kind of complicated, but it's a cool technique that I want you to see. I'm going to factor this x out, and I'm going to factor an x out of this one all the way out to the front, and then let that thing run to infinity. How do we do it, and why do we do it? So this is going to look really strange, but it's a technique that's good to see because it's a very commonly used technique in Calc 2, and it goes like this. Let's factor, let me rewrite the second term. How about this? Let me rewrite this as, um, and, and so I, what I want to do is factor out an x squared here. That leaves a 1 behind when we factor it out of this term. And then when we factor out of the second term, we get 3 over x left behind. Why? Well, when we factor something out, we're actually dividing everything left behind by that term. So when we had 3x, we divide by x squared, we get 3 over x. Now this x squared can come out as an x, and what do we get? We have limit as x goes to infinity of x minus x rad 1 minus 3 over x. Now you may be saying, shouldn't that be absolute value of x because the square root of x squared is absolute value of x, and we only wrote x? Well, since we're going off to infinity anyway, it's safe to assume without loss of generality that x is positive as we evaluate this limit. Next, we factor the x out to the front here. So we have limit still as x goes to infinity. And look at this, x times 1 minus rad 1 minus 3 over x. And if we let this thing run out to infinity, if we let x run to infinity here, we get the form infinity times, well, 1 minus 1 here, if we let x run out to infinity, this brings this whole second term to 0. That whole thing becomes 0. We get 1 minus 1, which is 0. So infinity times 0, which is indeterminate, but of a much better form, or at least of a slightly better form. Because once we get here, we can uh, force one of the terms down to the de denominator by multiplying by the reciprocal. So let's do that. I'll just keep going along the side here. So this is the limit as x goes to infinity of, let's see, let's leave the top alone, or let's leave the right-hand term on the top here, 1 minus square root of 1 minus 3 over x, and then this x comes down to the denominator as 1 over x. So once you get to the form 0 times infinity, that's the trick to get out of that form, often. Right, you bring one of the terms down to the denominator as it's reciprocal. Now if we run this thing out, let x go to infinity, we get 0 over 0. And check, we are back in good graces. We can use L'Hopital's rule. Though it's not going to be completely trivial, but let's do it. Okay, so remember here, for L'Hopital's rule, we take the derivative of the top and the derivative of the bottom. The derivative up top, all right, we need to give it a little thought. We still have this negative hanging out. And then it's 1 half... 1 minus 3 over x times the derivative, oh wait, this is to the negative 1 half, times the derivative of the inside, which is, uh, let's see, I guess that's positive 3 over x squared. Right, what am I doing to obtain those derivatives? I'm just mentally writing them in exponential form and then using the power rule. Okay, the derivative of the bottom, so I'm thinking this is x to the negative 1, so this becomes negative 1 over x squared, or negative x to the negative 2. Okay, and oh, don't forget your limit here. Limit. So easy to forget that limit. Okay, well, this looks like a nightmare. Have we, have we just made things worse? Potentially, but check it out. This x squared cancels with this x squared, and we have the negative and the negative canceling. So look at what we have now. We have the limit, still, as x goes to infinity, of 3 halves 
times 1 over rad 1 minus 3 over x. And now we can let this x run out to infinity. This just gives us 0 right here. So this whole thing becomes 3 halves. 3 halves. <laughs> Okay, so this is a nice technique that we don't use much in Calc 1, but it's good to see just so that when you start seeing it in Calc 2, you'll, you'll at least have seen it before and recognize it, maybe, hopefully. Um, but really, when it comes to infinity minus infinity, you just do whatever works. Sometimes you have to try a few different approaches until you find one that unlocks the problem.